Welcome to the GSL Code A. And, you know, just moments ago I had a crazy issue with my headset. Calder is eating some pizza. He actually had a fan bring pizza to Calder in the studio. Yep. And this is the first time Calder's ever been presented pizza in the studio. And it's a, it's a moment in history, really. It definitely is. So finally I am allowed to eat the pizza. I don't only uh, smell it yeah. and see it in front of me. That was actually uh, new. Yeah. I bet I like that quite a lot. By the way, go and check out the winner prediction. We've got some really tough to predict matches coming out tonight, so I want to hear what you guys think. Color wants to know, of course, as yeah. well. Today's games are going to be really, really interesting. And uh, even Gom tweeted earlier, and they were like, is this really Code A? And it feels a little bit more like Code S. With all the former champions that we have in today's lineups, it's going to be a very, very exciting day. We're starting things off with the Terran versus Terran, which is also pretty awesome. Young against Paul. Yeah. But from that point on, I feel like things even get a little bit more heated here. Yeah, I think most people would say that this is one of our easier to tell match, even though it's pretty tough to say who's going to yep. advance here. Um, Polt definitely the favorite. Byung has been looking on fire right now. And uh, definitely. I mean, Polt to me is, is someone who's iconic, who belongs in Code S, but he has to prove it tonight. If he doesn't win this Terran versus Terran, yep. he's going to have to go through the up and downs. He came back from NASL just recently and he took the third place. Jan fell a little bit short at the tournament. He lost a sort of with the 0 3. Paul revenged his uh, uh, yeah, teammate's loss and uh, took down sort of, I think, without dropping a single map or just one. I actually can't remember the per uh, exact score, but yeah, he advanced, so he took the third place after this. And uh, now we have him in the GSL again against the Terran player against Byung Strong Kespa Terran. And of course, we have also a few information that you can already see pop up behind us and now on the screen about the grand final. Yep, here is our format. You guys can see it's basically kind of like the up and down format. It's not exactly the same, but we're going to have the top three players from each group going to the playoffs, not the top two. And of course, then the top player will go to the round of four. Second and third goes to the round of six. It's really complicated how, uh, how it works out, but you guys can look at the list of matches for Group A. DRG, Hero, Leenok, and Harding will partake. Yeah, that's going to be uh, the first group, already pretty epic, but let's have a look at Group B. That's Sniper, Life, Violet, Rain, and Seed. Pretty exciting. I have to say that these games are going to be epic. Yeah, there's, that's going to be a pretty awesome tournament. MVP, yeah. I think, is the one that everyone's got their eyes on right now. Is the only Terran in the entire tournament. And I think if he can do it, man, it's going to say a lot about his skill and his resiliency here. The By the way, actually, oh, sorry, I just want to mention right, really quick, Look at that event down there. You guys buy a yearly ticket now. You will get that Grand Finals for free. Yeah, definitely do that. Go to gomtv.net slash ticket and check it out. And here, of course, our results from yesterday. We had Noblesse advance over DRG, playing really well. Boom Boom uh, took the win and advanced to Godess once again. Well, finally, after a little bit of a dry spot. Santa lost to Parting. Parting made it look easy. And then later on, Hack defeated j -Dong. Yeah, pretty straight up results there. And uh, here are the round three, day two matches. Byung versus Pol, Baby versus Symbol, MVP will face SOS. And last but certainly not least is Yongwa up against Life. Tell yeah. everyone about these matches. Look at all of the logos from where people came from in this. All of them but one are Code S, and the only player who's not coming from Code S in this case is Yongwa, who came off of two all kills in GSTL. The thing about Yongwa is that actually at WCG in Shanghai, he did not do well. He didn't yeah. even pass the group stage. And uh, from what I've seen and from what he told me is that he really played actually bad. So I feel that this was a little bit... He kind of got all in by some Chinese players. Man. Yeah. He got max set it. And when you get max set it, man, you never know what you're going to get. That's definitely true. So he has to come off, he has to just change his mindset right now. He comes from a few losses and he has to win today if he wants to go to Codes. But our first match is the Terran versus Terran that we mentioned here on screen. We have the both of them. Young yep. against Paul. Young against Paul here. Win record for both. Quite uh, impressive. Paul, though, you can see he's fallen off a little bit, you know, with almost 100 games in total played. He's actually dropped below 50%, one of very few players to ever do this. And it's definitely a sign that he's not as dominant as he once was. This guy is the super tournament champion. He was able to defeat MMA there 4-0. Nobody thought he could do it, but he did it yeah. with flying colors. But that was over a year ago. On the other hand, of course, we have Young with an impressive record of 71%. But keep in mind, he only played seven games so far. So we don't have the biggest sample rate for him just yet. But he's definitely a strong contender here in uh, today's third round match. So Bolt has to be careful here, Join, coming into this game. And Young comes off his win against Ness team. Yeah, that's uh, a very sad day for many fans. But, you know, 
in reality, I think that Young definitely has a slight advantage here because Polt has so many games to study and he has such a straightforward style. When you play against Polt, you know you're probably going to face some sort of number of Marauders. He also very rarely goes for mech. In fact, yeah. I don't think I've ever seen him go for mech. I have never seen him play mech, I think. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen it even one time. Maybe once? I had this joke where I would just say Polt will never make a third factory ever. You will never even think about it. Well, right now our map is loading. It is Whirlwind, the first map in our Terran versus Terra in our game to kick things off here at the GSL Code A. Bjorn is up against Polt. And we are going to find out who advances to Kodes today. The game is about to start. Get ready, guys. Here comes Young versus Paul, brought to you by Colin Wolf. That heaven observing. Comes in to reveal our Kespa player for CJ Entus. He is. CJ Entus Pyong. They've they've changed it, you know. First it was yep. CJ Intus, now they're going into the Entus. I I used to say Entus, and I was like, oh, I guess I'm wrong. It's Intus, but now I'm not sure. I I need somebody to tell me. Well, I'm pretty sure about his opponent at the bottom right. This is a guy that we've seen uh, so many times here at the GSL. He ca just came back from the NASL finals. It is the TSL Terran. It is TSL Port. I, li I really like Polt's ID, by the way. I just wanted to say it's such a, it's like a word that doesn't mean anything exactly, but sounds so awesome. Yeah, kind of like Caldor. Hey, nothing against my nickname. <laughs> it's it's just one of those things that's created. Yep, and it's awesome. Has no meaning whatsoever. Actually, just created it from actually five different other nicknames that I liked. Yeah, Let's you should actually you should tell the story of your ID because it looks like we're gonna have a command center first versus command center first. Yeah, we will have a little bit of time here, and we will talk about the place in a second. But yeah, the ID was actually quite simple. I just liked a couple of characters from a different fantasy series. Actually, also Warcraft 2. For example, uh, Korgath, Blade Fist, and uh, we had uh, Katga, which was uh, a mage in Warcraft 2 as well. So I knew that my character, my uh, nickname had to start with a K and I didn't want to have like, I only wanted to have dark vowels and I wanted to have the KH. So I basically just assembled the nickname until it looked and sounded like I wanted and has been my nickname ever since. Yeah, because I kind of thought that the nickname that I used in, uh, in Quake when I was like 12 years old did not really <laughs> go a long time. If you call yourself Nightmare, you feel at some point something's wrong here. Yeah, something is going to be a little bit weird uh, in the end. Yeah. I, I mean, the back then, in the, the group that met my friends, we always had like small lands. I actually like proved the name to be true, but then once you have internet and you have a connection that allows you to play online, it's like, ah, okay, maybe now I have to change that. Yeah, you know, uh, exactly. I, I used the idea of the Passing Shadow for a really long time, and uh, eventually people started calling me TPS because that was a little short for the Passing Shadow, and I, I thought to myself, well, TPS sounds a little bit less lame, but it also just doesn't really fit, so I had to I just had to stick to my name instead. Will fit. Yeah. By the way, uh, we saw the winner prediction briefly. Polt with 87% approximately of the vote, so highly favored by the fans to take this series. Build order wise though, we have a very slight variation, a little bit faster of a factory for Pyong versus Polt. This is what you'd expect from Polt though. And you know, talking a little bit about Polt, if you look at this guy's history, he has 69% win ratio if you count all his games, not only the GSL games, with uh, 160 games against 113. So a very experienced player in this matchup. But if you compare it to his TVP and his TVZ, it is his weakest matchup. In both other matchups, he's a tiny little better. Young, on the other hand, this guy was able to win against, um, yeah, against Tails with a 2-0. In a code A match, in his code A match number one in this season, then he had to face an ST in the second round, one with a two-one. Got kind of schooled by an ST in game number two, but <laughs> that did not really help the well, the creator of the universe. He lost the third game, and therefore Byung now in uh, the third round. We don't have too many, uh, yeah, too many sample games in the mirror matchup from Byung. He played a couple of series in the TVT, one of those against MVP, which he lost. Another one against Hardy was able to win, but so therefore we'll have to find out what he's going to do here today. I was getting... I'm actually still... Keller. Okay. I'm freaking out. Oh, uh, hold with... Doesn't really see anything, but he's... Holt is making a second yes, factory. Ready. But it looks like he's just going to go three factory... Uh, or three 
Hellions at a time, Blue Flame Hellions. That doesn't mean necessarily we're going to see Meg. Usually it does. But this scan actually doesn't make it look like Colt is going for Meg. Yeah, this scan just reveals one factory and the reactor. And it shows a late second gas yeah. too, so it makes it feel like he's probably not going Meg. Well, right now we have the Banshee here for Byung and also Cloak, so he doesn't skimp on the Cloak. He invests the 200 minerals and gas. And Holt will have to be ready here with saved up energy and scans to defend against his opponent's Banshee play. And if we just look at what he currently has on the map, that's two Marines for Polt. And he's not building any Marines right now. He's only yeah. going for Hellions. He's going to be in so much trouble, actually, against Cloak play because he's he just doesn't have anything prepared for that. Yeah. He's making only Hellions. And this is a build that's quite popular against Zerg players, for example, because the Mutalist takes so long to get out, and you're not going to see a rush to that. But Polt is going to have no turrets, and he's going to have only two Marines. When Cloak Banshees get into his base, he's going to have to rely only on missile turrets. Exactly. It looks really scary for Polt now. Even the Banshee alone can just kill the Marines and just go for it. Yeah, he's not going to be able to really get a turret up, I don't think. And he, not only is it the Banshee, but he's also coming in with Hellions. I don't think he expects to see only two Marines. That's it. The anti-air for Polt is gone. There's nothing for Colt left to defend against this. Can he somehow pull through here? It doesn't look like it. He has the Hellions to dominate on the ground, but this Banshee is just too strong. He can't be happy that Byung didn't get a second Banshee. And Byung, for some reason, does not actually attack the mineral line. He doesn't even try to get those towers from uh, being up. But, well, on the other hand, he can always try to find the sweet spot. Yeah, now he's going to go for the STV. He's stop mining as a natural. And he can even go for siege tanks. I think that would be appropriate at this point. Megadon Byung is, of course, going to a mech composition. He's stopped marine production. And Polt, on the other hand, even though it looked like he might consider it, he has started marine production. He added some extra barracks and the double eBays. Even though Paul is hurt, Bjorn could have done a lot more damage with those Banshees, but still, the ordeal is not over for our TSL Terran player. He has two Marines left, three, that's all there is, and here comes the Cloak. He does that's get those a nice Marines scan. are just able to take down the uh, Banshee. But not the Hellions, not just yet. All the SVs of Paul are starting to die here. He's got a few Marines out to help. But Bjorn is just rallying across the map with more Hellions. He's going to actually end his attack here with these SCV kills. The but SCV count so is now 25 for Polt and 41 for Byung. And those Banshees should be able to do even more damage to the army of the TSL Terran player. Yeah, it looks like he wants to, to hang out here for a second before he decides exactly how he's approach. You can see all those factors going down. Polt is trying to get his economy stabilized while making only two Marines at a time. He's got a late starport coming up. He may be able to recover here with the third command center he has, but it's just not going to be easy. SCVs are dying Marines trying to get into position. Can they really do it? Here comes the Cloak and the Micro. One Marine dies. He's outside of the range already. Another SCV bites the dust. He's and got two more Cloaks, but he's just losing more and more here. He loses Zantia. Yep. The Marine the Marines is are gone. gone. And now he can just keep going for the SCVs Cloak or not scan or not, he just kills several more, backs up again. He can actually kill both of these Marines if he micros properly. He uh -oh. needs another scan. Yeah, and in fact, he thought the Cloak energy was about to run out, looks like, because he dropped a mule, but there it goes. Finally, the Banshee falls. I think it was just in the range of the turret that we have in the main base, but still, if you just look at the Harvester's kill, that's 25 Harvesters that Byung was able to take down, so Paul really in trouble here. Yeah, Paul has only been able to kill the scouting SCP of his opponent. In uh, total right now, as far as army supply goes, as well, Byung is up 10 supply here. And he's wow. just got the amount to push across the map and end the game very soon with his first few siege tanks. And the way he's micro this, actually, he took a, a battle that was not in his favor and Hellion Count and actually microed it to make him win it. And now the siege tanks are out, he's gonna fight. Yeah, Bolt he's gonna fight, problem. he's gonna move out. We have Blue Flame now on the production tab, and Byung is in really good shape here. I feel, though, that his attack early on could actually have taken the game already. He yeah. could have won already. If he would have micro this Banshee a little better, if he would have realized you don't have any anti-air hold, then he could have just killed Paul right away. Yeah, he, he decided to take the fight to the Hellions instead. I, I completely agree. He actually could have just targeted down SVs, ignored the Hellions, and not even fought Hellion versus Hellion. That gave Paul the best trade he could have hoped for, honestly. Yeah. You're so right. And Young just played it safe. He didn't know that, so he just used the Banshees to uh, play with the Hellions to make sure that those Hellions had a little bit of air support, and that really worked well for him. Banshee is just going to poke here, and a scan will kill it if he can get get one off, but he's having to hold on his SCV to make it the and cancels all three. It's the tanks as well. Yeah, the tanks are going to have to unsiege and move. I can't believe he's not even going to move that one. He may lose it. He's going to lose it. Yeah, that's he's it. Gonna lose one. I can't believe that. 
That's... With the scan, he doesn't even scan in, does not know if he's able to get the Banshee. He won't be able to get it. Well, if he leaves it here, he will. There's a third base now for Pyong, and Holt is just so far behind. Uh, this is painful to watch at this point. He's trying, of course, and he's trying his best, but the the hard truth is he's on two bases against three. His opponent is already building the fourth command center. We have a harvester lead for Byung, an army supply lead. Paul is behind in every aspect of the game. Yeah, the one thing he kind of has going for him is that he has 1-1 one, one on his Marines, whereas, of course, Byung didn't have double armory upgrades, so he only has a plus one for his siege sinks. But even that, the composition is just better. It's so much bigger. He's got blue flame as well to tear through those Marines when they get close, and even the Thor is here. It's going to be hard to break through this, but Byung actually could just set up a contain and take the entire map and go for a fusion core at this point if he wants to. Exactly. He can take it here, he can attack, he can break through, but he doesn't have to. He has all the options. Whatever he does, it's the right decision. Exactly. That's a really good way to put it. Holt is going to take a risk here and send these drops across the map, but this is actually something... Oh, he sees it. He sees it. Yeah. Wow. He's, he's, got, he's got everything prepared. He sees... Oh, actually, does he see that? I'm pretty sure he saw that, yeah. He's not reacting, though, so it's probably a case that he could have seen it, but he just didn't actually have that vision of it at that moment. And there it happens. The turret is already firing away at those medivacs. The first one is dead. But the units are in the main base, and Paul, is this actually him getting back in the game? Is this his chance? He's gonna try for it. Really nice micro on the uh, the Viking here, and Hellions alone are not gonna be able to treat this cost efficiently. But it looks like with the Vikings coming back as well, and the SCV pull, he yeah. can clean this off no problem. He's still got three base economy. A few harvesters have been killed here, but still hold miles behind his opponent. Just look at Byung Supply here. 160 against 104. The fourth base now in position. He's going to make a sensor tower on top of his siege tanks. He's also got a fourth base going up. He's making turrets. He can actually start... If I were Pol or rather, if I were Byung in this situation, I would actually start to make some Banshees and try to pick off siege tanks or maybe even a fusion core try to get a battle cruiser out yeah. to pick off units at the front. Go for battle cruisers. Go for double upgrades. Yeah, he can do it. Yeah, I mean... Guys, you can see what's going on here. Look at the bank, look at the base count, look at the army size. It's just, it's brutal. Paul doesn't have, just highlighted here by Evan, he doesn't have the resource to go for plus two, plus two. Paul is isolated, man. He's struggling to break out. This drop is totally spotted by the sensor tower. You can see everything. Paul's actually going to try to take this command center. Again, this has a very low chance of working, but he has to take risks. He's so behind, he knows he can't just sit in his base and hope that somehow a miracle is going to happen. That's not a good strategy. But I don't think he's going to hold this base. Not against the firepower that Fionn has coming forward here with all these blue flame hellions against a mostly marine composition. There's no way. Yeah. There's no way for him to break out and secure himself in third base, and he knows it. He's trying and he's trying his best. Holt is a fighter, always was. But here is his attempt to break out, and you can see what's happening. We have the Hellions coming, and Holt might actually be able to push this back for now. But almost, but almost is not enough. And even if he did, like you were about to say, man, it's, it's all about the trade. <laughs> 70, 80 supply behind his opponent. And Byung just, he's got the better composition. He's going to be able to buy time with these Hellions. The Siege tanks do so much extra damage at the high ground. He's got plus two now on those tanks. And yeah, Paul cleans this up. But he can't deal with the second wave. He's getting the best trades possible, but the economy for Byung actually puts his income at something insane. He's actually got more than double the income of his opponent. Yeah. 90 army supply against 51 and the second wave. Oh, Byung will uh, soon enough just start to attack here. Holt is really hanging on though. You gotta give him credit for being able to stay in this game this long defensively, taking all the yep. right risks, doing these drops properly, then going out and taking that third base, getting a flank position. He's trying out. Yeah, to keep Young on his toes. It's just Young not taking any risks here. He doesn't take any chance at all. He's like, yeah, well, I don't have to. I can just go for 200 supply right now and then I attack and if something happens, I can just be nice again. That Hellion is not. Not going to be very happy. He did such a good job spotting for those drops earlier, but... Plus three attack already being researched for Pyong now. Oh, and all these mules were pulled. We're actually equalizing the mineral economy for a moment, but now he lost them all, and that is so difficult to deal with for him. Plus three, like you yeah. said. This is four siege tanks and four hellings being made at a time for Pyong. He is just going to make the ultimate composition. Yeah. 14 siege tanks, 20 hellions, 8 vikings. 
Air dominance as well. 120 army supply against 80. The better upgrades, and now he moves out and he takes Paul's army. But I don't even know why he's seeking up in this position. That one not less many units, and against yeah, the Lord, yeah. he does extra damage with the tank. So Paul with some stir step micro here will eliminate the barracks, meaning that no more factories can be made for Young, but he doesn't need any more factories. He's already set the perfect amount of production. Comes in here. He doesn't need to siege. He's going to siege a few of his siege tanks. He targets down the last of Pulse, even the Viking Slam here. And Pulse is going to roll over and die here in game number one. He's way too far behind. There's no way for him to come back. It's a sad truth that he knows it as well. Here comes Bjonga and takes down this third base of Pulse. You can see even in the booth just his face and how hard he's really trying to make this work. But time and time again, Pulse Marauder play has not been able to stand up to Meg. Bye bye, Orbital. Now, he can't lift it because of the Vikings. He can't leave it on the ground because of the siege tanks. Now down over 100 supply. He's about to have plus 2-2. Two, two. He may try to go with that timing, but it won't matter, I feel. No. His Vikings, uh, well, his Medivac died to the Vikings. And this is going to be game. Yep. Hold down one map in the best of three. GG. Young takes an early lead. And those 13% people, I'm pretty sure, are typing a lot of things on the internet right now saying, hey, yeah, maybe he got ahead with that Banshee play, got a little bit lucky, but his follow-up was solid. Yeah, it was definitely solid. I mean, it was well played by Bjorn here, but it was really just this early aggression that he put up against Paul, and Paul didn't really expect it. Talking to his coach right now about what was going on in uh, game number one, of course, for the second game. He will have a little bit of a different strategy to make sure that he can at least force map number three. No. Young with the yellow jersey, using his hot pack to make sure his hands don't get cold. Colt does not look really affected by this loss. He's been in the up and down so many times. He's actually been in the GSL so many times. Nothing is mysterious, nothing is... He knows the drill. Yeah. Nothing his experience won't help him with. The Cloud Kingdom well, the next map is Cloud Kingdom. You can say the Cloud Kingdom is the map. Either way, that's where we're going to see Polt make his last stand here. He has to win two games in a row, starting with Cloud Kingdom. If he wants that Code S spot, if he wants to get back in. Young, on the other hand, was also in Code S and wants to get back in straight after this Code A season as well. That's definitely true, both of them. Want to go back into code S, and who is it going to be? Bjorn with the lead in the best of three. Paul wants to force a third game. Cloud Kingdom, map number two, as mentioned before. And we are going to the game right now here at the GSL Code A. It's going to be CJ Andrews, Bjorn versus TSL Paul. Brought to you by Colin Wolf. Yeah. All over the radio and back up in the raves again. We got the